My name is Chloe Banks and I'm the Child Safeguarding Manager at a local nonprofit in Asia. And I chose to study at the Centre for Child Protection as I was looking for an MA program where I could dig deeper into topics of child protection that I come across in my work. And I wanted to study alongside a diverse cohort of students from many fields of expertise. I've been working in the care reform sector for over 15 years and I picked this topic for my dissertation as a way to dig into the nuances of the role of institutional care in the child protection system, focusing on it through the framework of systems, systems theory and attachment theory. I think all of us at our core believe children should always grow up in a family. And in the past century, there have been over 300 research studies published on institutional care, the majority of which have criticized institutional care for being a harmful and insufficient response to child protection needs, research which is echoed by the UN guidelines on alternative care. So why are institutions around the world still widely used as a form of care for millions of children today, especially babies? This led me to consider three research questions and conduct a secondary data analysis through a review of the current literature into institutional care for children and determine if the literature highlighted evidence-based deinstitutionalization strategies to either reduce dependence on institutional care or introduce strategies to strengthen child attachment and relationships. Although one of the challenges of this research is lack of clear definitions, the literature points to institutionalization as large group care setting for children and deinstitutionalization as a systematic approach to promote family based care for children and progressively eliminate institutions from a child protection system. Many studies show the links between depriving institutions and the negative impacts on children's physical growth, cognitive function and social and emotional development. When viewed through an ecological systems theory lens introduced by Bronfen Brenner in 1974, you can see the complex overlapping ways in which institutional care impacts children. On a macro and meso level, children lack protection through gaps in legislation, policy and oversight, lack of caregiver recruitment checks or training, unhygienic conditions, poor nutrition and harsh disciplinary routines. And on a micro level, children may lack quality relationships, have characteristics that make them more vulnerable to abuse and neglect, are out isolated from the outside world, and have no opinion in their own well being or permanency. However, a significant limitation in this research is that most of the literature refers to what's known as depriving institutions rather than smaller facilities that adopt child centered approaches with high quality caregiving and social work and a focus on attachment and permanency. And when there's only one narrative and it suggests that all forms of institutional care are damaging, this can lead to a deinstitutionalization strategy that is solely focused on the elimination of institutions. My second research question brought up studies from countries and contexts where rapid policy decisions to close institutions caused more harm, especially before there was a strong social welfare workforce established and alternative care options available. The pressure to eliminate institutional care based on targets and financial incentives have been emphasized over providing quality and safe services, which leave children and families more vulnerable. Deinstitutionalization is not just about closing institutions, but it's a policy driven process aimed at transforming child protection services to focus on family and community support. But ultimately, some countries are not ready to eliminate all forms of institutional care yet. So my third research question led me to review deinstitutionalization strategies that integrated attachment theory, a term first coined by Bowlby in 1958, which in recent years has also incorporated learnings from neuroscience and the developing brain. Through this lens, I wanted to learn whether interventions to build attachment between child and caregiver impacted a child's sense of identity, belonging and permanency. There were some very interesting studies of how this positively impacted children in practice, which could be integrated into institutional care settings. But there are still concerns that improving the quality of institutional care 
will neither reduce the number of children in this placement nor allow for resources to be diverted and allocated to other care reform strategies. So what takes priority? Improving institutions, strengthening alternative family-based care, family strengthening programs to prevent children from being separated in the first place. My dissertation proposed recommendations for further practice and research in order to consider how a tailored intervention according to each institution's own context can reduce reliance on institutional care, improve child-centered activities, and promote a continuum of family-based care options, preventing family separation and strengthening families and communities. These recommendations are rooted in a systems approach to international deinstitutionalization, to recognize that every child, family, and society has their own characteristics, which require different strategies, models, and timelines to transition a child protection system to a family-based model. Now, since completing my master's, I've moved into a new role at my organization to pilot a family strengthening program to reduce the numbers of children entering care while at the same time, I continue to promote safeguarding activities in residential care at micro, meso and macro levels. My dissertation has given me the evidence base, the tools and the language to know that both of these roles are deinstitutionalization strategies. And only by taking an ecological, holistic approach to care reform will we be able to see every child in a safe, loving and permanent family.